My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. The bodywork of this car, I can say without any hesitation or doubt, has been by far the most difficult, challenging, long and arduous build process of any part of this car. It wasn't because the individual processes of fiberglassing, bogging, sanding, painting or anything like that were hard, but because it took so, so much effort to get to a point where it was even remotely passable, and even after all that work that went into it, it still had so many flaws. In the end we had to bite the bullet and finish it in a condition that wasn't as good as it could have been, simply so I could direct my attention to other things. Nevertheless, I'll show you the process I went through to make it and point out where I could have improved the process. Previously I've shown you how I made the male bodywork plug and the female moulds which will now be used to create the bodywork. Each female mould would be used to make one or more bodywork pieces on the final car. The first part I produced was the nose. This was a relatively small and simple part which made it a good place to start. I pre-cut the fiberglass twill weave mat to shape as per my drawing to minimise the waste of material. Then I laid it up in the mould. This mould had been waxed and coated in a fine layer of PVA release agent much like the bodywork plug to allow for an easy release of the part. I used an epoxy resin using a paintbrush to wet out the fiberglass. This I've been told was mistake number one. I should have coated the mould in the epoxy first then laid the fiberglass over that. I ended up with small pinholes throughout the parts most likely due to the small pockets of air being trapped by this process. I laid a second layer of fiberglass on top and wet it out as well. Then I covered the in surface in peel ply. This finely woven material allows excess epoxy resin to seep through but does not stick to the part. Once removed it also leaves a surface that can be easily recoated or painted without any sanding or pre-preparation. After 24 hours the epoxy had set. I used some heavy duty scissors to trim the excess fiberglass. Then I slowly split the part from the mould. I poured water between the two as it helped to dissolve the PVA, assisting with the release. I performed the same process on the roll hoop shroud. The lower engine shrouds. the engine cover, before getting to the main bodywork mould. This would have three bodywork pieces pulled from it, the head shroud, shock absorber shroud and the main bodywork piece. Each of the parts was pulled from the mould after being laid up, washed down and trimmed of any bits of excess epoxy or fiberglass strands. I was in a rush to complete this as I had to have the car ready for a launch event hosted by my fellow car builder Kyle, who you may recognise from JKF Aero, who assisted with this car's design. I presented the car in an unfinished state with tape covering imperfections in the bodywork as well as holding it together. Rushing was mistake number two. So at this stage I had a full set of bodywork pieces, but the surface finish quality wasn't that good. I had to make a choice figure out how to make the parts better and remake the lot from scratch or to try and work with what I had. I chose to continue with what I had, I didn't believe that I would be able to get a much better result the second time around, I'd just end up costing myself money. I therefore persisted with these parts. Like with the bodywork plug, a long bog and sand process was now required to achieve a decent result. The bodywork also needed to be stiffened in strategic locations, particularly the main bodywork section which still had to be flexible enough afterwards that I could stretch it out to get it over the chassis. And finally, the pieces all had to be made to fit with one another. Each of these tasks happened concurrently over three or four months as I worked towards the general goal of finishing the bodywork. So that I don't waste too much time, I'll just cover the main processes I used. Making the lips in the bodywork pieces was done in a couple of different ways. The 
shock shroud where it met the main body was the easiest to do. I placed it into the mould and taped it down so that the flanges sat flush with the mould surface. I then placed peel ply over all of the flanges. This would prevent the parts from becoming glued to one another when I laid down the new fiberglass. The fiberglass was done next. It bonded to the main bodywork, which was cut such that the edges matched exactly with the shock shroud edges. Another layer of peel ply went down next. This would allow me to place weight over the fiberglass without it bonding. This resulted in flanges that would ideally mate perfectly with the attaching part. The quality of the finished product was mixed, but where it worked, it worked well. Strengthening the bodywork was done either by laying extra fiberglass layers down or by laying foam strips along the fiberglass, bonded by epoxy then covered with more fiberglass to make a rudimentary composite. Again, the results of doing this were mixed. It worked as a method to stiffen parts, but the stiffness was localised to the region with the foam strip. At worst, this resulted in buckling or cracking around these regions. Perhaps tapering the thickness of fiberglass might have prevented a stress concentration from forming. I just didn't think of this when I did the work. The head shroud had to be removable so as to comply with the rules related to the cockpit opening size. I decided to get clever and incorporate the CAMS mandated impact protection foam into the head shroud. To do this, I used these pipes to stand in for the chassis members beside my head. These positioned the impact protection foam correctly within the shroud. I then sprayed expanding foam into the part, creating a rigid piece. After cutting, trimming and sanding the foam back to shape, I laid fiberglass over it to completely seal the head shroud. Pins at the front would retain it while still allowing easier removal. This cover can therefore be removed as a single piece quite easily should I need to be extracted from the car in a hurry. And while all of this was going on, the repetitious bog and sand cycle continued, very slowly improving the surface towards the result that I was after. It took months to do this. At this point I got help from another person within the Formula V community, Ray Folletti, who has helped me quite a bit with this project now. I brought the bodywork to his place and we started preparing it for painting. He was pretty dissatisfied with the job I'd done and had no qualms with letting me know that. We set to work under Ray's direction, improving the parts to a point where he would feel it was ready for painting. We started by putting a layer of primer down to give ourselves a base to work from. We then set to work sanding it back basically to the fiberglass. The aim was to basically try and fill in some of the tiny imperfections that would show up if the top coat were to go down there. This began another repetitive cycle of priming and wet sanding that lasted for many days. After maybe six days of work, we reached a point where we thought the top coat was ready to go down. We started with the nose and shock cover. The nose turned out alright, but the shock cover had hundreds of tiny pinholes. The work we had done just wasn't enough. I went overseas for a couple of weeks at this point and left the bodywork with Ray. He continued to prep and paint it while I was gone, so I came back to beautifully painted bodywork panels. All that was left on the paint was to buff it with a cutting compound. We tried initially doing it by hand with a rag, but it was going to be a very slow process this way. I bought a cheap electric buffer and went over the entire body. This left a really nice shiny finish. Now we had to put on the stickers. Late last year I asked for suggestions for the scheme for my car, and I received a lot of really great responses. It's hard to tell which of the three designs was most popular, I got pretty even feedback uh, between them. I also got other suggestions from people. I particularly liked this one from Deary Me on YouTube, which I ended up mocking up. In the end, I had to keep it simple so that it was possible to do with a sheet of blue solid vinyl and some scissors. It seemed that I wasn't able to effectively wrap the vinyl around the complicated shapes as I'd hoped, so for now the car just has a simple stripe on the side. I'll extend this onto the rear engine shroud to make it look a bit more complete. I'd like to revisit the graphics in the future, but right now the racing season is approaching. The time just can't be spared. Finally, the numbers went on, plus the Intercad and JKF stickers. One final thing before the bodywork is finished. The head shroud wasn't painted with the rest of the pieces. Instead, it got a layer of suede glued to the surface. In all honesty, the surface quality just wasn't good enough for paint and would have taken far too long to get there, so this was a simple trick to hide the surface while still providing a cover. The results weren't terrible, though I used too much epoxy and it ended up soaking through and showing in several places. Anyway, that's the bodywork done, and it's the last of the construction videos that I've got for now. 
The racing season starts at Wakefield Park a week from when this video will go up, so you should see a lot more of it on the track in the near future. I'd like to just thank everyone again who has been involved and helped to get the car to where it is today. My father who has helped immensely with this build, Ray who you've seen helping complete the body, Kyle through JKF, Aero who gave me a lot of guidance on the bodywork and did a lot of the design work on the Aero, and Intercad who provided me with SolidWorks which was absolutely essential for me to produce not only the engineering design and drawings for the car, but the graphics for these videos as well. And finally, as cheesy as it may sound, everyone who's watched this, I've got a lot of really good feedback and suggestions through this which has been extremely helpful. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this come together. There may be more in the future both of the racing and of the upgrades that I do over the coming season, but for now, thanks for watching.